Ladies and first of all, it is not you wrong. Okay. No. No, no. Yeah. Just... New Jersey Transit Rail Opt Operations Inc. New Jersey Transit Bus Operations, Inc., New Jersey Transit Mercy, Inc., and the New Jersey Morris, Inc. Good morning. Please mute your phones and turn your attention to the public safety announcement. At New Jersey Transit, your safety is our highest priority. Please listen to these safety instructions in case of an emergency. In an emergency, announcements will be made over the loudspeaker or by a uniformed police officer. The primary exit for this location is the stairwell adjacent to the elevators, which can be located by exiting the boardroom and proceeding through the glass doors. There is a second alternate staircase that can be accessed through the door at the front of this room to the right behind the board dais. New Jersey Transit Police will administer CPR and use the defibrillator located near the elevator if necessary. Fire extinguishers are located in the front and back of this room. Please be guided by the directions of the New Jersey Transit Police and staff. As a reminder, members of the public are not permitted to approach the dais and should only share board meeting materials with New Jersey Transit staff at the reception desk. Thank you and have a safe day. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll take roll call. Board Member Brontis? Here. Board Member Brown? Here. Board Member Morocco? Here. Board Member Medina? Here. Board Member Thomas? Here. Board Member Weiss? Here. Board Member Spala? Here. Board Member Cruz? Here. Vice Chair Carson? Here. Chair O'Connor? Here. For the record, Vice Chair Carson and Board Members Medina and Spala are participating remotely. Board Member Nara is absent. This is a meeting of the New Jersey Transit Corporation and its affiliates and subsidiaries. Adequate notice has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and New Jersey Transit's en enabling legislation. Notice was filed on March 6, 2024 with the Secretary of State and sent to newspapers of general distribution posted in the main entrance of NJ Transit's headquarters, published on the corporation's website, 
and sent to each individual agency and organization that requested such notice. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the February 13, 2024 board meetings? Any discussion? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Brantis? Yeah. Board member Morocco? Yeah. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Yeah. Board member Spala? Abstain. Board member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Abstain. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. President and CEO Corbett will present the President's and CEO monthly report. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Chair and uh, members of the board. And good morning to all the members of the public uh, joining us in person or online. <clears throat> Uh, this morning, I'll begin with one of the most significant state funding proposals in New Jersey Transit's history. At his February 27th budget address, we were honored by Governor Murphy's recognition of the tremendous progress NJ Transit has made over the last six years, and we were particularly grateful that he prioritized creating a, consist a consistent additional dedicated funding source for NJ Transit. To be clear, this investment goes far beyond investment in transit. As I've often uh, said, it's not just transportation for transportation's sake. Maintaining these critical services is absolutely vital. Uh, transit is the underpinning of any state or region's economy and is a lifeline for many New Jerseyans who rely on these services for getting to work, school, recreation, or medical or other appointments. We thank Governor Murphy for his leadership and vision, not only in prioritizing this critical investment, but for his support from day one that allowed us to bring NJ Transit from the brink of despair just six years ago to an agency that today is nationally recognized by APTA and has the second largest capital program in the country behind only the MTA in New York. Um, but we certainly know we are not perfect and there's a lot more to, uh, still to be done moving forward, but su sufficient, reliable, and pre predictable funding is absolutely essential to ensure the vitality of our transportation system and to build on the progress we have made to improve reliable, uh, reliability and safety while improving accessibility and fostering growth in communities across the state. While the governor's proposal will support our long-term physical health, and J Transit's fare adjustment proposal remains under consideration, and it is necessary to bridge the short-term funding gap of $106.6 .6 million in our fiscal year 2025 operating budget. Uh, toward that end, since January 24th, NJ Transit conducted a comprehensive public engagement process to gather feedback on our fare proposal, culminating last week with a series of 10 public hearings in 10 different uh, counties across the state five during the day and five in the evening to comply with the current legislation. In order to maximize public participation and feedback, we offered customers multiple additional channels to submit their feedback for the record for those who could not attend one of the 10 public hearings, uh, an online form available on our website via email and by post, uh, post uh, traditional postal mail. I'm pleased to report that our efforts were quite successful. Uh, we received a total of 1,197 public comments across all feedback channels including the in-person public, in public hearings, almost doubling the 672 comments received back in 2015, uh, the last time we had a hearing uh, increase. All feedback, regardless of whether it was shared at a hearing or in writing, will be reviewed, considered, and weighed equally by NJ Transit's Board of Directors before any final decisions are made. Um, moving on to service uh, and planning, uh, if ever there was an opportunity, uh, opportune moment to ensure that NJ Transit continues to prove its service and operations, it is now as we focus on an upcoming global event that positions New Jersey on the world stage, the 2026 FIFA World Cup. We are currently ramping up collaboration with the FIFA 2026 World Cup Host Committee, uh, UITP, the International Transit uh, Association, Rutgers uh, Kate and uh, the Art Regional Plan Association and other stakeholders to evaluate best practices both nationally and internationally to ensure that the transportation component of the games sets a new standard of excellence for a global event like the World Cup. <clears throat> We're also committed to ensuring this incredible opportunity brings sustained social, economic, cultural, and public transportation benefits to New Jersey long after the World Cup's final whistle has sounded. In, our addition, in addition to our preparation for the global stage, we are prepared for a cherished local tradition uh, that brings communities together, and that is the St. Patrick's Day celebration taking uh, place around, around the state and in New York City. This month for St. Patrick's Day, NJ Transit increasing service and encouraging parade, roaders to, uh, parade goers to go green by leaving the driving to us and helping the environment. On March 3rd, we provided enhanced rail ca uh, capacity for the annual St. Patrick's Day parade in Belmar, 
Uh, some of you may have seen pictures on our social media channel of both our board chair, Fran O'Connor, uh, who attended the parade, and our general counsel, Brian Wilton, who marched in it. Uh, this Saturday, March 16th, we will offer full regular week weekday service on all trains, buses, and light rail systems for New York City's parade, and we will enhance rail capacity on our Pascack Valley line on March 17th uh, to and from the parade in Pearl River. Moving on to our agenda for this morning, we have a busy meeting planned with four items up for board consideration that I'd like to highlight. First, we will seek board approval to transmit our final proposal for the fiscal year 2025 operating budget to the state legislature. We will also introduce an update to our fiscal year 2021 through fiscal year 2025 five-year capital plan. Overall, this capital plan update promises to build on the significant transformation underway at NJ Transit by continuing the projects and programs that improve reliability, on-time performance, customer comfort, and the overall customer experience. As we update our capital plan, we have two significant infrastructure projects up for board consideration today, including a contract to begin the construction of the second phase of our long slip project in Hoboken. The first phase of this $300 million project is now complete with the entire length of the canal filled in, uh, protecting Hoboken Terminal and the city of Hoboken from floodwater intrusion. Phase two includes three ADA accessible platforms to support six new tracks, main maintenance and fleet reliability facilities and other amenities. As, the pro as this project progresses, NJ Transit has approximately half a billion dollars worth of work underway in Hoboken, a figure that does not include Hoboken Connect, the, trans the transformational infrastructure project also on our agenda this morning, now moving into construction. In, con in conjunction with uh, many of the improvements uh, we have underway at Hoboken Terminal, today board is also, also voting to ex execute a ground lease agreement for Hoboken Connect, which will set the stage for the official groundbreaking of this $800 million uh, plus region changing project, jump started in 2022 through the cooperation between NJ Transit, Elcor, Hoboken, and the state with a $176 million investment uh, committed to the infrastructure by Governor Murphy. The ground lease will initiate the beginning of construction of a 27 story residential building with more than 12, uh, 1,200 square feet of retail, uh, launching a project that will uh, truly transform our Hoboken terminal and its surrounding in, uh, into one of the crown jewels of our system. Speaking of significant transit-oriented development, uh, this past Friday I was pleased to join Governor Murphy and a host of other elected officials and stakeholders at our Metro Park station to celebrate the beginning of construction for what will be Hackensack Meridian Health's newest health and well wellness center. In addition to providing unparalleled access to a wide spectrum of health services, this $200 million project expected to create at least 1,000 jobs for the region is a perfect example of our broader TOD strategy to both generate additional non-fare box revenue as well as to drive sustainable growth through enhanced public transportation access throughout New Jersey. Overall, the Metro Park Development Project will support local and regional economic development through the creation of Class A office space and retail space, housing opportunities, uh, community amenities, and stationary improvements, including bicycle, pedestrian, and infrastructure upgrades. Moving, uh, moving on from it, infrastructure, I'd like to talk a bit about our employees, the folks who are responsible for keeping uh, New Jersey moving, as well as our commitment to diversity and inclusion. On February 26, I was honored to speak at a press conference in Newark Penn Station to celebrate Black History Month and a new partnership between NJ Transit and Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield with coordination and support from NJ Transit's marketing department, as well as our black African-American company employees research group called Bridges. There we unveiled one locomotive and two bus wraps generously sponsored by Horizon, transforming these vehicles into moving tributes to African-American heritage. We really appreciate our board chair, Fran O'Connor, joining, joining us to celebrate and share the, uh, his support for this initiative as well. As I said at the event, uh, we hope these wraps serve as a symbol of our commitment to view Black History Month not just as one moment in time, but as a continuous year-round effort to embrace and celebrate the diversity and inclusion that we have at NJ Transit. <clears throat> as we continue our efforts to support employees through various recognition programs and initiatives, I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge National Transit Employee Appreciation Day. Uh, coming up on March 18th, this recognition, formerly known as National Transit Operators Appreciation Day, now highlights the dedication to hard work not only of our frontline operators, but of all transit employees. Truth is, every member of our team, no matter what department they work in, from across the organization, plays an essential role in the success of our overall transit system. So that ties into NJ Transit is using the Transit uh, Employee Appreciation Day to introduce, uh, reintroduce a campaign that honors the employees who keep our system and our state moving every day. Through our Say Thanks campaign, beginning tomorrow and running through March 22nd, 
We're once again providing customers with an easy to fill out form available at njtransit.com slash thanks to offer their comments for an NJ Transit employee who has made a positive difference to them during their trips. And speaking of appreciating our employees, though he's not here to join us today, uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to our rail division's chief signal engineer, Ed Jocelyn, who recently celebrated his 55th uh, anniversary at NJ Transit. A 55 year uh, career at, for anyone <laughs> uh, and, uh, is a noteworthy achievement, but to accomplish, uh, accomplish it all at one organization is truly rare and impressive milestone. Uh, congratulations go out to Ed. And certainly for those of us who worked within it originally on the PTC uh, challenge we had six years ago, uh, he's truly an inspiration. So, uh, yeah. When I retire, I'm going to have him take over. <laughs> um, and to, to begin to wrap up, I'd like to share a heartwarming story that exemplifies NJ Transit's commitment to the communities we serve and the extraordinary lengths our team goes to make a difference. On February 23rd, I had the pleasure of joining NJTPD Sergeant Dominic Segro and NJTPD Officer Daniel Jackman and other members from NJ Transit's marketing and communications team at the Skylands Animal Sanctuary and Rescue in, in Sussex County to present a $10,000 check to the sanctuary's founder, Mike Stura. Uh, the check was made possible through the sales of stuffed animals we created in the likeness of Ricardo the, the, uh, the bull, uh, the steer, uh, which sold out quickly after they were made available out of a transit shop. Uh, many of you may recall Ricardo, a Texas Longhorn steer, who unexpectedly uh, journey <laughs> began with a visit to the train tracks at Newark Penn Station back in December and really garnered worldwide attention. Uh, thanks to the prompt effort of our NJTPD in collaboration with other law enforcement and animal rescue teams, Ricardo was safely rescued and relocated to the sanctuary where donations uh, now go to uh, supporting Ricardo's care. And as we extend our recognition and support to community organizations like Skyland's uh, Animal Sanctuary, NJ Transit itself continues to be recognized uh, by distinguished external entities like APTA, Forbes, and most recently, the American Council of Engineering uh, Companies of New Jersey, or ACEC NJ. Now, I'm pleased to share that NJ Transit's infrastructure upgrades at our Newton Avenue bus garage in Camden has been recognized with a 2024 Engineering Excellence Award from AC ACEC NJ. Our contractors for this project was awarded uh, the honor for their work in designing the bus uh, charging infrastructure project that will set the stage for NJ Transit to launch its de deployment of eight electric buses in the Camden region. Uh, finally, I want to make sure everyone knows that our fiscal year 2023 20, uh, annual report is now available on our website, njtransit.com report. The report offers a substantive summary of the year's progress, accomplishments, and customer experience improvements, as well as on-time performance statistics and other data. Uh, including a comprehensive uh, financial summary. I uh, hope when you get a chance to review it, you'll be as proud of the work we've done as an agency during the last fiscal year as I am. And with that, uh, Chair, I conclude my remarks and turn the floor back to you. Thank you, Kevin. Su Suzanne Mack will present the advisory committee report. Um, I'd like to welcome the new commissioner and the new chairperson and the new board members. Um, I know last month was your first uh, meeting officially here, and um, my counterpart, um, Anna Marie Ganella of Rosada, attended from South Jersey and gave our report. We meet bi-monthly, so she gave our February report. We are meeting um, on March 15th, so next month I'll be back and I'll explain what we went over, um, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to give me some advice on what we should look at next. However, I did want to, um, and Kevin has already gone through most of the things on the agenda, so I don't need to go there. But I did want to really uh, tell you that our our concern is always the fare increase. Our concern is, uh, is you know, our riding public and how they react to that. You did an outstanding job of getting participation on this um, on this issue, and so I can tell you without a doubt that when we get together on Friday, we will be combing through what the comments were. However, how much changes in a month? Um, when we were when we met last month, we were worried about, and we always go back to a dedicated source of funding, and then the governor uh, for the first time. And I have been doing this since the first advisory board. I am part of the original group, uh, not 55 years, but it's a, it's a long time. And uh, this is the first time this we have seen a governor come to the dais and actually give us a possible dedicated source of funding. Uh, so I just say, because you all represent him as members of the board, just thank you on, the, on behalf of everyone in the writing public. 
Um, we knew he was working on it. We knew when he came in that uh, there was a change in the air, but uh, to actually see for the first time uh, a possible dedicated source of funding. Now, as Kevin said, there may still have to be a slight fare increase in order to abridge the gap, but I don't think anybody can really tell you how monumental what you are doing here today, um, transmitting the budget and actually being part of a board uh, that would be able to do that. You know, all the accolades from APTER and all the other people couldn't thank you enough uh, for putting together the framework from which this actually may work. Um, so the other thing I wanted to tell you is I'm always amazed when I come up here. Um, I've been here for Sandy. I've been here for 9-11. I've been here for COVID. And the, you talk about, you know, say, what are you talking about? What are you voting on? But to be talking about normal things that you're doing to support the residents of New Jersey, like, um, you know, stuffed animals and helping people and marching in parades and celebrating Black History Month, this is normalcy. This is what this agency is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be helping the economy and helping the people in New Jersey live normal lives. And I, I just want to congratulate you all on it. And um, I will be back uh, with my report. I also wanted to tell you, because I think some members are new, um, the advisory board role is to help, uh, and we do. I mean, we. Uh, we reviewed um, your raise grants and things like that. We offer you support, but we also take assignments. So over the years, we've we've created the fair fare policy. We've created the bike on board policy. We've gone to the PAB terminal in New York and made recommendations. And um, we've actually run fair hearings in the past. So what I'm saying to you is don't just think of us as somebody who people who come once a month to give you a report. Hopefully, as you go through your board agendas, we used to have a board liaison. I know things have been a little hectic um, on the board, but you can always um, you can always think and say, gee, we have, an advise we have advisory boards and people around the state. Um, perhaps this would be something that they would be able to look into for us. And that's, as you all settle in, uh, we just want to offer you that again. Again, welcome. Thank you, Suzanne. Are there any comments from the public? There are two in-person speakers and five pre-registered telephone speakers. Speakers, in order to give everyone an opportunity to be heard, comments will be limited to three minutes. Priority access will be given to pre-registered in-person speakers, followed by any additional in-person speakers. We will then take comments from pre-registered telephone speakers, followed by any additional telephone participants who are queued to speak. Those participating by telephone, if you have not already done so, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad to enter the queue to speak. You will hear a brief tone to indicate you have successfully entered the queue. The first speaker is David Peter Allen, followed by Tanine Howard. Good morning. I'm David Peter Allen, Chair of ScatterTAC, the Senior Citizens and Disabled Residents Transportation Advisory Committee the other advisory committee, reporting to you on recent developments concerning our committee. We have established a county services subcommittee and an administrative subcommittee as a pilot program in the hope that these bodies will improve our ability to help our constituents through our advice. Our county services subcommittee is off to a good start. At our February meeting, Bergen County's transportation managers made a presentation to our committee. Our elected officers and other members gave the presentation high marks and its preparation included a conference call with the county managers and members of our county services subcommittee. We were able to raise a number of issues unique to Bergen County, including potential improvements to the county-sponsored downtown shuttle in Hackensack, the need for more connectivity with the main Bergen and Pascal <clears throat> Valley rail lines, and the severe lack of service in uh, northern Bergen County since Coach USA slashed service on several lines from full service to only a few commuter runs into Port Authority in New York. The county directors were positive about our efforts and acknowledged that it helped, helped improve their presentation, and we plan to continue the dialogue with those managers and possibly with their local citizens advisory committee. Our administrative subcommittee held an online conference with a New Jersey transit management representative and an administrator at a university where a program called Otter AI is used to record meetings in an effort to find a system that works better than Microsoft Teams, which has been difficult for some of our members to access and which delivers a substandard transcript. 
We are hoping to test Otter soon, and this is the sort of routine task that our administrative subcommittee can handle, which frees up our meeting time for other topics. We are still concerned about Access Link, which transports our most vulnerable constituents. The Rider's Choice program, which uses taxi-like vehicles, is popular with riders and has been expanded to more counties. The United States Justice Department is still watching Access Link under a consent agreement, though, and Access Link has so far refused our efforts and our requests to start a constructive dialogue. We hope that New Jersey Transit officials who are concerned about riders with disabilities will use their good offices to help get such a dialogue started. Our membership committee has been busy filling vacancies on our committee. A full complement is 18 members, six from each of the state's three regions. Over the past 18 months, we have lost five. We are pleased to report that between candidates who came to us through outreach conducted by the local program support managers and our own recruiting efforts, we have more than enough applicants to fill the two openings from North Jersey and the two from Central Jersey. These applicants are attending meetings and we get, as we get to know them and they become acquainted with us. We are having difficulty filling our spot in South Jersey though and we encourage seniors or younger persons with disabilities who live there to apply. The region includes Burlington and Atlantic counties and the counties south of there. And I will conclude with just one personal remark. I heard Mr. Corbett's remarks about transit employees and appreciating them. As a person who depends on transit for all mobility, I encounter those employees on every mode every day, and I don't think there's anyone here who can appreciate them more than I do. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Tanine Howard, followed by the telephone speakers. Hello, my name is Tanine Howard. Uh, just wanted to welcome the commissioner, um, the new commissioner. Um, appreciate it. Um, congratulate the former commissioner on getting a promotion. Uh, my name is Tanine Howard. Uh, I was a former employee at the New Jersey Department of Transportation. And I wanted to talk about uh, discrimination at New Jersey Department of Transportation. Um, I'm going to hold it off because I want to hold it off to your, um, your main meeting, the uh, New Jersey Trust Fund, where the real money is. Um, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. And I just basically I wanted to compare the discrimination at New Jersey DOT to the discrimination at New Jersey Transit. And basically, um, I'll use a case study. Um, you have a bunch of uh, legal settlements you've had, at least two in specific, uh, with retaliation. And they're just very similar. Um, I guess basically how you, know, you use New Jersey Transit police to harass employees. Um, DOT may use the state police or inspector general. Um, and basically, I, this is what I'll do. I'll, I'll go to your other meeting, and I'll try to do this as a service to, you know, to make New Jersey Transit and NJDOT better. Thank you. Thank you. Operator, please open the floor to public comments by telephone participants, beginning with those who pre-registered to speak. Thank you. As a reminder, if you have not already done so, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad to enter the queue to speak. You will hear a brief tone to indicate you have successfully entered the queue. Each speaker will be given three minutes for their public comment. A warning will be provided with one minute remaining and again with 15 seconds remaining. Once again, please press star 1 if you wish to make a public comment. And there are eight public comments in queue. First public comment from the phone participants is coming from Sally Jane Gellert. Sally Jane, your line is live, and your time will now begin. Okay, good morning. Um, this is uh, Sally Gellert. I'm chairperson of the Lackawanna Coalition. Um, our statement that was made at the Hackensack and Newark hearings was sent to the board today. We want to register our strong objection to the scheduling of these hearings. The proposal was announced on January 24th, but no hearing was held until 40 day, day 40 through 45 thereafter. Technically, therefore, complaints of a short public comment period are unjustified, assuming that you open the comment portal right after the announcement. However, the appearance, at least, is of an agency that really does not want to hear from the public. In addition, you required notice by February 16th, some two and a half weeks before the first hearing, of any need for language assistance, sign language interpretation, or other accommodation. 
too much for an agency of your size, which should need well, well, maybe a week's notice. In fact, counties provide election materials in multiple languages as a matter of course, and best practices for public gatherings include sign language interpretation. If grassroots activists can do that, at least for large events, then why cannot New Jersey Transit do the same? In searching for confirmation of dates mentioned above, I stumbled across a PBS article from April 14, 2022. New Jersey Transit approves plan to give, to give riders a fare card by 2024. Well, here we are. Is there an update? Will such a project save money for the agency or cost money? If the latter, I would argue that covering the cost with funds currently planned for the new headquarters lease would be better for your customers. We continue to support the acceptance of cash fares as universally available and self-controlled, but realize that some riders would prefer to use a digital card. We entered state budget hearing, state budget season, when Governor Mercy gave his budget address on the last legally allowable day, and we are concerned about the implications for New Jersey Transit. We are taking things one at a time and encourage the board to do likewise, which means that we stand with a number of speakers at the recent hearings and asking you to vote no on a fair increase in April, or at least follow Senator Reinberg's recommendation and wait to vote on a fair increase until after you see the state budget and where that leaves the agency. Uh, we have noted a relative decrease in directly appropriated state aid and would suggest that be increased. The deadlines for submitting your budget to the legislature will already have passed by your planned vote in April, so take your time and get this right. Uh, I mentioned accessibility because of the fare increase hearings, which had no virtual or phone component, and many people at both hearings complained about that. In 2024, post-pandemic, it's ridiculous to not have a virtual option. Um, as a member of ScatterTech, I know what people run into a similar situation with New Jersey Transit's use of Microsoft Teams. One seconds. person wrote, when I go on Teams, I have a very difficult time hearing. Sometimes it skips or will even kick me off completely, and then I can't get back in. I don't know if it's Microsoft End or NJTN, but it's frustrating to try to attend monthly meetings. According to someone at the City of the University of New York, Teams is excellent for collaboration, but substandard for meetings. People expect Zoom. I expect it's even worse for hybrid meetings. We're also. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Matty Bukis Highlands. Matty, your line is live, and your time will now begin. Thank you very much. Good morning to the chair and to the president. I'm Matty W. Bucky's Highland. For today's topic, I'm going to talk about what President Corbin said about what happened. Well, well, I did listen to Governor Murphy's budget address for 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 fiscal year ending June 30th, 2025, about the relationship to the fairs. We have to thank our legislators for that. I would particularly like to thank your budget chairman, Paul Sarlo, in the Senate, and Chair Eliana Pinter-Marin in the Assembly, and to, uh, to, to Transportation Assembly Chair Clint Calbury's, Clinton Calbury's, and uh, Senate Assembly Chair Patrick Dignan, as well as Senate President Nicholas Guitar and Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin for their part. Fares are important, as you mentioned, to cover the shortfall. It's required by law that the budget has to be balanced. Balanced, though, though. Fare increases. No one wants to pay more fares, but, but it's necessary for someone to have to pay for those fares. As someone who commutes sometimes to New Jersey from Long Island, who takes the Long Island Railroad from, like, Seaford to Wontaw, we have direct access to all the way to Trenton, from, from the Long Island Rail to the New Jersey Transit. And safety of mind is a top priority to be concerned about. We can't have fights that you see on the Jerry Springer show like that. And, for example, it's going to, you know, for fights like that could, oh, no, no, all right. Anyway, the Long Island I hope I would, that's all I will have to say for this one. Thank you, and may God bless each of you on you. Operator? Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Doug O'Malley. Doug, your line is live and your time will now begin. Uh, can you hear me? Let's go ahead, sir. All right, super. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Doug O'Malley. I serve as a director of Environment New Jersey. And I just wanted um, to 
briefly uh, just provide some feedback on the currently concluded New Jersey Transit Fair Hike process, uh, as well as advice for, for future hearings. Um, first off, this board um, should not move forward with any fair hike at the April 10th board meeting. Um, there should not be a fair hike until the $56 billion budget is approved by the New Jersey legislature at the end of June and signed by Governor Murphy. Um, as part of this, we should not be balancing New Jersey Transit's budget on the backs of train and bus riders. Governor Murphy and legislative leaders need to step up. They need to go beyond providing dedicated funding, which is incredibly important. And Governor Murphy is providing a leadership by by proposing a dedicated leadership by by proposing that dedicated funding. But we also need to ensure that we are not including um, this fare hike on the backs of transit riders. I wanted to thank the New Jersey Transit board members and staff that attended the various uh, fare hike hearings, including board members Anara and Morocco, as well as Abrantes, uh, Cruz, Medina, and Thomas, as well as others, and also legislators that spoke out against the fair hikes, including Assemblyman Hader, former Majority Leader Weinberg, Senator Cryan, uh, Mayor Bala, and Senator McCurgy. Uh, the problem that, that all of you heard who were at these hearings is that New Jersey Transit is not a perfect market. As economists say, it's both an inelastic and elastic market. And if you raise fares, less riders will ride. You will you'll have more riders that literally join the roads, and you'll lose revenue. But it's also inelastic because the most vulnerable riders don't have that choice. They don't have a Plan B New Jersey Transit Service to turn to. I wanted to quickly provide tips for future hearings. Um, first, the New Jersey Transit Reform Law should serve as a guide, not as uh, not as a kind of well, an absolute um, feeling. Um, virtual hearings should increase participation, both for riders and for board members. More hearings that are in transit stops the importance of holding a hearing in Jersey City or Hoboken, more clear postings, and to fix the discrepancy between bus and train riders. And I just wanted to, to end by saying that this, shouldn't, this should not be the end of an era. Fair hike hearings provide a necessary service to allow riders to tell you New Jersey Transit directly their feedback. That's a democratic process. And right now the fair hike proposal will abolish it. And, and that, is, that is wrong to say nothing of the stealth fair hike of 3% annually. Right, New Jersey Transit should look at other transit agencies. Other transit agencies do not have the stealth hike with no public seconds, input right. embedded in it. So, you know, the fair hike itself is is creating a lot of agita, but don't have a system that allows a three percent increase to move forward in in permanence. That's not right for riders, and that's not right for this board. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Adam Reich. Adam, your line is live and your time will now begin. Good morning. First, as a quick housekeeping item, at the conclusion of the public comment period, uh, Chair O'Connor or the Board Secretary, can you please indicate whether Board Member Nara left a written update on the status of the customer advocate position? It's something she indicated she was going to do for this meeting at the last Operations and Customer Service Committee meeting. I can't help but notice that today's board meeting is in the same room that a fair hike hearing was held last Friday night. Today, and for pretty much every board meeting and any other type of meeting you've held since April of 2020, you've offered a virtual option in the same room. Yet you did not do so last Friday. You didn't do so with any fair hike hearings. I'm asking the board to reopen the public comment period uh, to rectify what I would contend is disability discrimination. I am able to talk to you today because of the virtual option. I'm in a high-risk category that prevents me from participating in indoor events without a masking requirement, as these fair hike hearings were. Not offering a virtual option denied me a reasonable accommodation. It denied me the benefit of equal access. It did not allow me to hear what other writers had to say in order to enable more informed written comments in response to the fair hike proposal, it did not allow me to be heard as other writers had. Management or possibly the desire of the governor's office not to have unfavorable anecdotes through virtual comments is not a justification for denying a disability accommodation. The standard would be an undue burden. It is disingenuous to suggest that you could not have done what you're doing today, at least for last Friday night's meeting. Therefore, I ask the board to remedy this by offering at least one daytime and one evening virtual hearing 
on the fair hike proposal before the board considers the proposal. The board doesn't even have to acknowledge it as disability discrimination in any way. You could simply say we recognize there was a lot of desire among riders to participate at these hearings. We know that big cities with transit dependent populations like Camden and Jersey City were left out. We want to give them that chance to participate. Beyond this, again, you know, you don't want to jeopardize the process ultimately by the risk of litigation or a civil rights complaints about this. Just reopen the public hearing process, schedule two quick meetings, and it'll be done. Beyond this, I want to express some concern. Mr. Corbett recently met with a railway historical society group that I noted had a history of poor handling disability accommodations requests and ignored harassment by their members seconds, on me. issues of disability. Mr. Corbett, by working with these groups, if you don't send a signal that New Jersey Transit is going to require change, it sends a tacit signal that the agency is okay with that behavior. I would ask you to pause your working relationship with these groups until they commit to meaningful change. I would ask you for a dialogue regarding the issues I raised with you back in September. Again, appearances matter, even though that may not be your intent, there are larger issues with systemic discrimination involving your employees as well that is linked to these groups. I ask, therefore, that you pause your relationship with these groups until they commit to change and offer me a dialogue on how to rectify it. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Tim Sevener. Tim, your line is live and your time will now begin. Hello, Tim Sevener from the Transit Village at Mount Tabor and board member of the New Jersey Association of Rail Passengers. Um, I applaud the uh, the dedicated funding for New Jersey Transit. Um, that's really needed. I would suggest, as I suggested before, that that the state should consider their they're considering uh, fees for electric vehicles. I think they should do like Washington D.C. and have. Increase the registration fees based on weight, and that money goes to New Jersey Transit. Um, I also think that we should have some money from the private jets. There were 842 private jets that flew to the Super Bowl. Um, that is the most polluting way to, to travel, and Teterboro Airport is one of the major sites for private jets. Again, a private jet. B could raise money for transit instead of this most polluting form of transportation. Uh, I had the pleasure of taking the Morris line to the St. Patrick's Day parade in Morristown, and the train was packed. Uh, conductors were very helpful as usual. But that just shows the potential. That was on a weekend. There was no extra service for us on the Morris line that I know of. But we, we need to go beyond just going to um, New York City Midtown as the main goal of New Jersey Transit with huge double-decker 10-car trains. We, we need to increase frequencies. I have a chart here which I've done. Uh, many board members may not know this, but on the Morris line, we had 10 cuts a day to Hoboken, on the weekdays, one minute remaining. And Twelve cuts a day on the weekdays from Hoboken. On the weekends, twenty cuts to and from Hoboken. Um, we need to restore those cuts. It's good to see that Hoboken's getting Hoboken Connect, but how do I get to Hoboken with all these train cuts? Also, that gives another access for local transit. The thing is, with the Morristown Parade. It shows how local transit can be useful if, if it's available and if it's more frequent. We're wasting our resource in, in Hoboken by not providing access to it from the Morris line, uh, the Booten line. Fifteen seconds remaining. And that's, this, is, this is going back to 2008. We've actually had these major cuts to Hoboken. We need to restore that service. We could do it in 2008. We can do it in 2024. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, if you wish to make a public comment, it's star one on your phone. That's star one if you wish to make a public comment. There are four public comments 
remaining in queue. The next public comment is coming from Jason Anthony. Jason, your line is live and your time will now begin. Uh, good morning, New Jersey Transit Corporation board members. Jason Anthony from the Long Island Railroad ADA Tax Force. Uh, sadly, uh, Kevin Corbett's reports comments. Uh, it was so laughable that for the uh, disability com community, it was so sad to hear because in last week's Fair Heights uh, hearing, New Yorkers like myself, among others, were disenfranchised from attending them. Here's why. New York Penn Station is the westernmost terminal for New Jersey Transit Rail Operations Inc. And thousands of people use it every weekday and every weekend to go to and from New Jersey. And why wasn't a virtual option like the MTA has it since COVID for people with disabilities and the elderly who cannot attend the meeting in person. Kevin Corbett and the New Jersey Transit Board should be ashamed of themselves because one, they are violating the First Amendment rights, and second, they are violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. And New Yorkers will not tolerate any more their actions. And another thing, once and for all, settled the, and once and for all, settled the lawsuit that New Jersey has with the MTA. Because due to this, we won't have elevators, modernized signals, among other things. So, do the right thing for the accessibility community and no, no act like an enemy. So, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from William Ritzer. William, your line is live and your time will now begin. Thank you and good morning. My name is Bill Ritzler and I'm the uh, transportation chairperson of Tri-County Sustainability. I'm reading, I'm doing a reading of the uh, testimony that we had for the fare adjustment so that all the board members can be familiar with our position. Tri-County Sustainability does not support the proposed FY25 15% fare increase and the associated future year 3% automatic increases. While TCS appreciates that the future operating budget deficits represent a substantial and that a fair increase represents action that New Jersey Transit can implement alone, the scale of resources required to address those challenges is beyond the capacity of New Jersey Transit to correct unilaterally. The full power of the state of New Jersey must be employed to solve this issue. The planned fare increases represent a substantial burden for many New Jersey Transit riders. TCS uses this form as a clarion call for the legislative and executive branches to identify and implement solutions that provide New Jersey Transit with a long-term, stable source of dedicated funding for operating expenses that is not subject to the whims of competing priorities or political agendas. TCS supports the corporate transit fee advanced by Governor Murphy, as well as the elimination of any proposed highway capacity enhancements. Funding from the proposed highway capacity enhancements should be redirected to New Jersey Transit operating support. Tri-County Sustainability also rejects future regressive actions that, if implemented, would inconvenience New Jersey Transit riders. These include service eliminations or reductions that radically reduce the value and attractiveness of public transportation as a mobility alternative. Service eliminations or reductions based solely on fare box recovery ratio instead of a matrix of factors including social justice and environmental impact. Modification of the pass options in a manner that is detrimental to New Jersey transit passengers. Modification of the existing fare zone system in a manner that moves passengers into a higher zone or increases the number of zones required for travel of an existing trip. 
resulting in a backdoor fare increase of an amount even greater than that proposed by New Jersey Transit. Properly funding public transportation is not a luxury in New Jersey, a state with high population density. Providing attractive mobility alternatives in this state is necessary to keep all transportation modes from grinding to a halt and to also reduce the impact of climate change. State-level government leaders need to do the right thing and provide New Jersey Transit with funding resources that eliminate the potential for undue financial burden on passengers. I'd also like to echo as support for the previous speakers who called for delaying the vote on the fare increase until after the state budget has been passed. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Andy Pollock. Andy, your line is live and your time will now begin. Good morning, everyone. Andy Pollock for the record, Passengers United. So I'm here to comment about the proposed New Jersey Transit Fair Hike, which will go into effect this summer. For the record, our organization will not be supporting these fair hikes. Basically, you are proposing beginning on July 1st to raise the fare by 15%. In a time where New York is considering implementing congestion pricing on drivers, at a time where the New Jersey Turnpike and the Garden State Park will have rate, rate, rate tolls, and also at a time where toll hikes have also gone on all Port Authority bridge and tunnel crossings, this is already another burden to the millions of people who live in the Garden State. Also, yearly increases beginning in 2025 of 3% is also a very unfair burden to the people of New Jersey. We will not be supporting any of these fare hikes. Just like how we've stated to the NTA, we will not be supporting congestion pricing. And also, I do agree with one of the public speakers earlier. Why wasn't a fare hearing heard in Hoboken? There should have been one held in Hoboken. And not only that, but why wasn't one held at New York Penn Station? You know, that's completely unfair. So, again... Passengers United will not be supporting the 15% fare hike increase on July 1st, followed by the annual 3% increases beginning in 2025. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Richard Grant. Richard, your line is live, and your time will now begin. Uh, hello. Um, for the benefit of Board Chair O'Connor and other new board members, I want to restate and modify my November 9th, 2022 comment. But first I'll note that the Hackensack fair hike hearing worked fine without the distracting two minute and one minute comment countdowns. In fall 2022, I visited the website of your peer transit agency, the MTA, where it posts video recordings, materials, and documents of MTA board and board committee meetings at which the public can comment. It's July 2022 committee meeting video running just under eight and a half hours, led with the safety committee and included the audit and capital program committees. The MTA posted meeting videos since July, since January 2014, four years before New Jersey Senate Bill 630 created a new New Jersey Transit Board with four new standing committees. But the New Jersey Transit Board has been taking a different approach, the kind of approach that a board might take when it is not genuinely intent on representing and serving the interests of the riding public and therefore on making a persistent effort to be as transparent as possible. For three of the NJ Transit Board six committees, the riding public cannot attend their meetings, cannot as a result comment at their meetings, and in line with this, meeting dates, agendas, and audio recordings are not posted on the website. So meetings of audit, capital planning, and safety, unlike their MTA committee counterparts for eight years running, are conducted in tinted window secrecy. Ask yourself, why wouldn't the long-established practice of going in and out of executive session enable those committees to open to the public? The writing public wouldn't even be aware that those three committees existed but for the website naming each board member's committees and the Audit and Capital Planning Committee provisions in Senate Bill 630. The writing public still has no information on what specific board concern drove the creation of the Ad Hoc Safety Committee or how often it meets or what duties or functions are within its purview 
or what areas it reviews, monitors, or advises the board on. For the other three committees of the New Jersey Transit Board, six committees, the board created a second and different policy. The writing public can attend meetings of administration, operations, and energy, can comment at them, and can visit NJ Transit's website to find meeting dates, agendas, and audit audio recordings. But although the board follows a long-standing practice of limiting public comment time at its own meetings of three minutes per speaker, it decided that the three committees that didn't entirely shut the public out must slash the three minutes by a third, as if there's a football stadium of people wanting to get online to talk at committee meetings. Had the board increased the speaker comment period up to four and a half minutes, it would have been just as odd. If the board is about more than approving contracts or progress projects, if the board is to be more about representing and serving the riding public, it needs full transparency. Thank you. Thank you. There are no other public comments in queue at this time. Thank you, public speakers. Are there any board member comments? Board member Morocco? Thank you. I, I'll, I'll be very brief. I just wanted to uh, echo the sentiment of President Corbett and, and several of the speakers in, in expressing our appreciation to Governor Murphy for proposing a corporate transit fee. I think that is critical for New Jersey Transit to fulfill its mission. And also to second uh, President Corbett's and, and several of the speakers' appreciation to our staff here who keep New Jersey Transit running, uh, not just uh, on the 18th, but every day. Uh, we do appreciate their work. Thank you. Are there any additional board member comments? Board Member Cruz will present the Operations and Customer Service Committee report. Thank you, Chair. The Operations and Customer Service Committee received an update on trends, analysis, and actions for rail, bus, light rail, and access link. The committee also received an update on the cost of service. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Morocco will present the Administration Committee report. Uh, the Administration Committee received a financial update. This included a summary of operating results compared to previous year's comparable period and fiscal year 24 budget, 12-month fare box revenue compared to pre-COVID, major balance sheet items, and federal COVID-19 relief grant drawdown summary. Additional information was provided as part of the agenda <coughs> materials, including the cost of service key performance indicators, 12-month fare box recovery, history of vacancy, attrition and hires, ridership and revenue, and a monthly budget to actual comparison for January 2024. That concludes my report. Thank you. Board, Men Board Member Wise will present the Capital Planning, Policy, and Privatization Committee report. The Capital Planning, Policy, and Privatization Committee reviewed the board items for the NJ Transit Resilience Program, Long Slip Fill, and Rail Enhancement Phase 2, Rail, Track, and Station Construction Contract Award, and contract amendment for phase two construction assistance, special track work for long slip fill and rail enhancement phase two rail, track, and station, purchase of Harsco Rail TX16 switch and production tamper for NJ Transit Track Department, purchase transportation services contract extension for 21st Century Rail Corporation, Hudson Bergen Light Rail, and Ground lease agreement for Hoboken Connect Transit Oriented Development Project, site number two. That concludes my report. Will the member wise present the Energy Sustainability Policy Committee report? The Energy and Sustainability Policy Committee introduced the Energy and Sustainability team members and reported on the sustainability plan and the battery electric locomotives. That concludes my report. Thank you. President and CEO Corbett will present the action items. For the record, Board Member Medina is recused from item 240305 and will not comment or vote on the item. Okay, great. Thanks, Megan. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, I'd like to introduce Richard Schaefer, Senior Vice President of Capital Programs, to present Board Item 2403 05. Uh, Rich. Thank you, CEO Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403-05, NJ Transit Resilience Program, Long Slip Fill and Rail Enhancement Phase 2, <coughs> Rail Track and Station Construction Contract Award, and Contract Amendment for Phase 2 Construction Assistance. Authorization is requested to amend the contract with AECOM USA Incorporated of New York, New York, to 
provide construction assistance services for phase two of the long slip canal fill and rail enhancement project at a cost not to exceed six million dollars plus five percent for contingencies subject to the availability of funds authorization is also requested to enter into a contract with Shavoni construction company llc of secaucus new jersey to provide construction services for phase two of the long slip canal fill and rail enhancement project at a cost not to exceed two hundred eleven one hundred thirty four thousand eight hundred twenty dollars plus 10 percent for contingencies subject to the availability of funds we ask for your approval of item 2403-05 may i have a motion to approve board item 2403-05 any discussion meg please take a roll call vote roll call vote board member abrantes yes. board member morocco yes. board member weiss yes board member spala yes board member cruz yes vice chair carson Yes. Chair O'Connor. Yes. Motion carried. Great. Thanks, Rich. Uh, now, I believe uh, Jim's going to I'd like to introduce Jim Sincaglia, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Rail Operations, to uh, present uh, the related uh, board item 2403 06. Jim. All right. Thank you, President Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403 06, special track work for long slip fill and rail enhancement, phase two rail track and station. Authorization is requested to enter into a contract with Volstapine Railway Systems Nortrack, LLC of Birmingham, Alabama, for long slip special track work in the amount not to exceed $1,898,198 plus 5% for contingency. We ask for your approval of item 2403 06. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403 06? May I have a second? Any discussion? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, Board Member Abrantes? Yes. Board Member Morocco? Yes. Board Member Medina? Yes. Board Member Weiss? Yes. Board Member Spala? Yes. Board Member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, I'll ask Jim to carry on with uh, and present. Um, uh, item 2403-07 regarding uh, equipment purchase. Jim. Thank you again, President Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403-07, purchase of Harsco Rail TX-16 switch and production tamper for New Jersey Transit Track Department. Authorization is requested to enter into a contract with Harsco Rail of Charlotte, North Carolina for the purchase of a TX-16 switch and production tamper in the amount not to exceed $2 million $301,829. We ask for your approval of item 2403-07. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-07? Motion. May I have a second? Any discussion? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Brontes? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board Member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Thanks, Jim. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Mike Kilcoin, Senior Vice President, Surface Transit, and General Manager of Bus Operations, present board item 2403 08 regarding uh, Hudson Bergen Light Rail. Mike. Thank you, President Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403 08, Purchase Transportation Services Contract Extension. 21st Century Rail Corporation, Hudson Bergen Light Rail. Authorization is requested to amend the contract with 21st Century Rail Corporation of Jersey City, New Jersey, to extend the contract end date by five months from April 15th, 2025 to September 14th of 2025 for a cost not to exceed $42,821,279, including 5% for contingencies subject to the availability of funds. We ask for your approval of item 2403-08. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-08? May I have a second? Any discussions? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Abrantes? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. 
Thank you. I'd now like to introduce uh, Jackie Stanford, Acting Senior Vice President, Chief Financial Officer and Treasurer, to present Board Item 2403-09 regarding uh, ground lease. Thank you, Kevin. We're presenting for approval item number 2403-09, ground lease agreement for Hoboken Connect Transit-Oriented or Development Project Site 2. Authorization is requested to take all necessary actions to execute the ground lease agreement for Hoboken Connect Site 2 between New Jersey Transit and Elcor Hoboken Rail Station Redevelopment, LLC, as well as all other necessary agreements to implement the mixed-use, multi-phase transit-oriented development project. We ask for your approval of item number 23, 2403-09. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-09? May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Brantis? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. I now ask uh, Jackie to continue uh, with item 2403-10 uh, regarding the budget uh, transmittal. Jackie. We are presenting for approval item number 2403-10, an annual budget proposal transmittal. Authorization is requested to transmit exhibits A and B to the Commissioner of Transportation and to the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the General Assembly, and the Assembly Transportation and Independent Authorities Committee and the Senate Transportation Committee. We ask for your approval of item number 2403-10. May I have a motion to approve item 2403-10? May I have a second? Second. Any discussions? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, Board Member Brantis? Yes. Board Member Morocco? Yes. Board Member Medina? Yes. Board Member Weiss? Board Member Spala? Yes. Board Member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. For the record, Board Members Brown and Thomas are recused from items 2403-11 and 2403-12 and will not comment on the items. Great, thank you. I'd now ask uh, Jackie to continue with 2403-11 regarding a personal injury claim. We are presenting for approval item 2403-11, personal injury claim of Zaneda Londano. Authorization is requested to settle the claim of Zaneda Londano through her attorney at an amount discussed in executive session. The attorney general has approved the proposed settlement subject to the availability of funds. We ask for your approval of item number 2403-11. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-11? May I have a second? Any discussion? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, Board Member Abrantes? Yes. Board Member Morocco? Yes. Board Member Medina? Yes. Board Member Weiss? Yes. Board Member Spala? Yes. Board Member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. I'd now ask Jackie to consider with the, uh, continue with another personal injury claim, item 2403-12. Jackie? We are presenting for approval item number 2403-12, personal injury claim of Sandra Holmes. Authorization is requested to settle the claim of Sandra Holmes through her attorney at an amount discussed in executive session. The attorney general has approved the proposed settlement subject to the availability of funds. We ask for your approval of item number 2403-12. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-12? I have a second. Any discussions? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, Board Member Brantis? Yes. Board Member Morocco? Yes. Board Member Medina? Yes. Board Member Weiss? Yes. Board Member Spala? Yes. Board Member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce uh, Anthony Greco, Senior Vice President, Communications and Customer Experience, to uh, present Board Item 2403-13. Regarding adoption of reg uh, regulation standards. Thank you, President Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403 13, regulations adoption of NJAC 1686 advertising standards. Authorization is requested to take all actions necessary to adopt NJAC 1686 advertising standards consistent with the board item and corresponding exhibits. 
We ask for your approval of item 2403-13. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-13? May I have a second? Second. Any discussions? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Brontis? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Great, thanks, uh, Anthony. Uh, now I'd like to uh, uh, call uh, Rich Schaefer back up uh, to present board item 2403-14 regarding Mason substation. Thank you, CEO Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403-14, Mason substation. Total authorization increase number two request, payments for PSENG services and construction. Authorization is requested to increase the funding required to complete the Mason substation as discussed in executive session at the February 2024 board meeting. Additionally, staff is directed to take all actions necessary to comply with the agreement for completion of the Mason substation. We ask for your approval of item 2403-14. May I have a motion to approve item 2403-14? I have a second. second. Any discussions? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Brantis? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. For the record, Vice Chair Carson is recused from item 2403-15 and will not comment or vote on the item. Thank you. I now ask uh, Rich to uh, carry on for the last action item for today, 2403-15, regarding Hudson Tunnel. Rich. Thank you, CEO Corbett. We are presenting for approval item 2403-15, resolution authorizing entering into a funding agreement with the Gateway Development Commission in support of the construction of the Hudson Tunnel project. Authorization is requested to enter into a funding agreement and any amendments thereto with the Gateway Development Commission, whereby NJ Transit, subject to annual appropriations and the availability of funds, would convey the amount received from New Jersey Department of the Treasury for the payment of the State of New Jersey's obligations for payments made to satisfy railroad rehabilitation and improvement financing loans as part of the State of New Jersey's obligation to support the Hudson Tunnel Project. We ask for your approval of item 2403-15. May I have a motion to approve board item 2403-15? May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Meg, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, board member Brantis? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board member Cruz? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carried. Before we adjourn to executive session, I want to let the public know we will return to adjourn the meeting, but no further business will be conducted. May I have a motion to enter into an executive session to discuss personnel matters, contract negotiations, the status of pending anticipated litigations, and matters falling within the attorney-client privilege, including but not limited to the personal injury claim of John Horace, the personal injury claim of Marie Parison, and the personal injury claim of the estate of Kevin Milford Sanchez. May I have a motion to adjourn, enter into second session? May I have a second? Second. Any discussions? May I please take a roll call vote? Roll call vote, board member Brantis? Yes. Board member Morocco? Yes. Board member Medina? Yes. Board member Weiss? Yes. Board member Spala? Yes. Board member Cruz? Yes. Vice Chair Carson? Yes. Chair O'Connor? Yes. Motion carries.
I hereby reconvene the open session board meeting. I will now take roll call. Board Member Abrantes? Board Member Morocco? Here. Board Member Medina? Here. Board Member Weiss? Board Member Spala? Here. Board Member Cruz? Here. Vice Chair Carson? Here. Chair O'Connor? Here. Since there is no further business, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? May I have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried, meeting adjourned. Thank you. This does conclude today's meeting. You may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.